Hey, sneaky Linux back tonight, and tonight we're looking at Vector Linux 6 Lite. Lite means, or well, supposedly, it's a stripped back version, but it's still quite a large download. So this is a screen you get once it's installed. Now remember, it's based on Slackware, so that's a text-based installer, although for the larger versions, they do do a live CD, but not for the Lite version. But it's quite simple to do, there's no big thing about it. There's plenty of automatic stuff, if you don't want to do anything, it'll do it automatically for you. Just make sure you don't want to lose any stuff when you do it. So I'm going through some of the stuff here in the menu. So Mixer, XMS, Xene, Save called uh, Webcam. Oh, RipperX. I haven't used RipperX for ages, but I'll show you something about it. I've not got a CD in the drive. But basically, you put a CD in the drive, it comes up with all the tracks you want. You want to configure it to where you want it to save the file. So if you want to save to MP3, for instance, then I would go to 320 if it's a reasonably new CD. of an older one. 256 maybe. And you can use variable bit rates, etc. High quality mode. And the commands for playing. And the CD database, should I say, etc. etc. If you're going to use WAVE, you can use that bit as well. But I wouldn't do that personally. So, that's quite a good one there. It's the first bit of Vector Linux. Once it's installed, it's really, really quick actually. I was quite impressed. I've not done Vector Linux for over a year, maybe two years, I think. It's the last one I've done, so it's a long while. Oh, Dilo. If you've never used Dilo before, it's a really, really stripped back browser. It don't do Flash or anything like that, so I don't even expect it to do it. But if you just want to uh, browse some text stuff, ideal, super fast, lovely. But once you start getting into Flash and stuff like that, you don't want to know really. You don't want to know. Although, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you can now. But hey, Dilo's there. That's quite a nice little thing there from back in the day. Right. In Office, you just get a pathetic writer and SIAG or scheme in a grid. Happy word I've added myself to make sure the, the package manager is working. Don't know. Pathetic writer says what it says. If you ain't got nothing else, it will do. But it only saves into certain formats. It's their own, a text format, rich text, HTML or PDF. Now, the PDF bit is quite good because if you, know, if you ain't got nothing else, PDF will do, wouldn't it, really? When you think about it. So, we'll come out of that one. Then we'll go back. Up we go. Office again. We go down to the spreadsheet. Now, it's a little bit better. Reminds me a lot of DSL, really. A lot of stuff that's in DSL. But that's not going around anymore, is it? I mean, you can still download it, but hey, it's not been updated or anything. Apparently, there's big arguments, apparently. Anyway, you can save as CSVs or their own format, text, markup. There's a Lotus one there. If you use Lotus, that's quite good. And PDF again. So, yeah. Not too bad. But you might want to say a bit more full featured, mightn't you, really? In all honesty. So, anyway, we'll go back up, excuse me. Right, I installed an earlier version of Every Word. There is two options in the download manager. But it does what it says on the tin, basically. You know? So, we'll see what this one saves as. As you can see, we'll go down here. It saves into Microsoft Word. So if you're going to do stuff for school or work or stuff, it's going to be a lot better than their own Pathetic Writer. I love that name, no Pathetic Writer. It makes me laugh, it does. Excuse me again. It's just having dinner, sorry. It's 263, so it's not that new, because we're on the 28s now, aren't we? In the new versions, and they are very, very good, by the way. Even though they're so small. So anyway, the system. There's their package manager, g so that's the Slackware package manager. It takes a little time to load up. If you look down in the right hand corner, you can see the CPU doing a bit of work. So let's see what they've got here. Now, bear in mind, you do need to update the repository when you first use it. So you just click update, basically, and it'll do it all for you. So let's see if they've got Gimpy on here for you. Yeah, Gimpy. Oh, that's super, super duper. So you can add plenty to your light version, but do you need to? It's up to you. If you want to do photo editing, you really do, don't you, really? unless you just want to look at photos and then you don't. So yeah, not too good. You get description, dependencies and logs down the bottom there, as you can see. Yeah, that's this description of it. I mean, GIMP's been going a long, long while now. Apparently it's just about to have a big revamp, so that'd be nice to see when it's out. As I do use it quite a bit. Not as much as I used to, but I still use it quite a bit. So yeah, that's pretty good. GIMP helped too. Hmm, didn't see that before. No, we'll look for something else. Right. Instead of SIAG, what about GNumeric? Oh, that been a repo? Yes. We've got two versions here, it's 8.2 and 8.4. Bearing in mind, you have to have G -Office, uh, 
go off this G off this one on about. So I'll go for the 8.4 version. We'll click install. And we'll click execute. Now it tells you that it's going to have some extra packages. So one of those will be go office because it needs go office to run. Yeah, click OK. And off we go. Now I'll cut a bit of this because my net speed has been so bad for about a week now. So hey, never mind. There you go. This is the picture you get when you're downloading your stuff. I'm only doing this really to make sure it all works. So if you did want to try it, I need all you really. But if you use one of the large effective Linux ones, it'll all come installed. But it's a larger CD, obviously. Installing it all for us now. Dim -ba -dim -ba -dim. Clock's going round, clock's going round. And apparently, that's all done. So, while we're here, shall we see if we can install Gimpy as well at the same time? Why not? So, what version should I choose? 265 is a new one. Go install again. Now, remember, this is a bigger file, so it will take longer to download. Don't need extras, but you're going to use 50 megs once it's unpacked and installed. So that's big, 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 big. Loads and loads of space. Now, this bit I have to cut, as you just see. Could I've been here all night, otherwise. So that goes installing. And installs, and installs. This can be a bit boring, Slackware based distros, actually. Some can be really, really fast, you know, really, really quick. Others are just not. It's just the way it goes. A bit like some other programs in Linux, really. You have to get the ones that suit you best. So anyway, if we go down there, you can see that Gimpy and Genomeric are not there. The simple reason is you have to update the menu. So basically, we click Update Menu. Yes, refresh menus now. That's what we want to do. Now, this can be long and drawn out. Luckily enough for us, this time it ain't. I've done some oh, a few months ago on a different one, and it took bloody ages. And again, I was using a different machine at the time. This one's quite quick. So apparently they've all updated now. So what we're going to do? Go back down to the menu, and we we'll go to graphics. Oh, there he is. Look. Should we open him now? Yeah, why not? Let's open him. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Look, lovely. That looks good to me. Really, really quick actually. I was quite impressed with that. Quite impressed indeed. So we'll come out of that anyway. We'll come out. And should we go and see if Gino is installed? Yay! Why not? Go to Office. There's in the menus. So we update the menus. So it's all there. Uh, in my opinion, that looks a bit better. I've got more options to do more stuff than I really. If I was to do spreadsheets. Which I don't. But they get to do. So if I was going to put in one of the systems. Which I might do tonight actually. Again, so I'll get a bit bored or something. So when they wake up, they get freaked out by a new OS. That's great when you've got kids in it. You can do stuff like that. They wake up and they have a new computer. But it looks the same, but it's not. I don't have to learn it all over again. Mine are so used to it now. It don't really matter, but hey. Anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. In utilities, you've got loads there. File Manager, Bombo Component Browser, KDM Setup, GTK Theme Switcher, so a lot of updates, Package Manager, System Administrator, etc, etc, etc. We'll go to the browser. Seems to work alright. We'll go to the Vector Linux page, I think. Now, there's a reason I'm doing this. Right, we'll get to the page, eventually. So Google works. And considering my web's so slow, it's loading up nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to Products. So we go to Products. And there's all editions. We've got Deluxe Edition, blah de blah de blah Standard, Live, and the Light. So look, there's the Light section. It tells you all about it. It's still 700 megs. Or is it? No, no, no it's one a bit less than this one. I can't remember now. I downloaded it quite a few days ago, so I can't really remember. And they also do a VBox image. So if you just want the VDI to run in the simulator or in a Sun Virtual Box, it's still there. I'll go down the bottom of the page. This is a bit I like. Requirements for the light edition. A Pentium 166 and 64 mega RAM. Now, if I can find the machine, I'm going to try this on it just to see if it actually works. But hey, Victor Linux Lite, not too bad, mate. Give it a go. Download's not too bad, unless you find somewhere else. Sneaky Linux going out.